Dear friends, so uh, today is the last full day of the retreat, and I sort of given out most of my uh, bag of tricks, <laughs> you could say, or you know, meditative uh, advice on how to. Uh, you know, cultivate mindfulness, concentration, and and wisdom. Because that's the 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 progress of meditation is first you have to become mindful, practice mindfulness. Through that practice of mindfulness, you become concentrated. A lot of people think mindfulness is not concentration. That's not true. Uh, <clears throat> Mindfulness is simply, uh, or concentration is simply unbroken mindfulness. Uh, <clears throat> and our mindfulness and concentration gets broken because of the hindrances and the distractions, either sleepiness or and getting, you know, moving around and, or just uh, lost in the thoughts. Uh, so. Concentration is really just unbroken mindfulness. <clears throat> now, I wanted to mention about uh, this evening, uh, because you know, normally on this uh, New Year's Eve, we try to encourage people to you know, stay up to sort of uh, symbolically uh, greet you know, the New Year. Uh, you know, in uh, meditation. And I know a lot of people have fear, oh, stay up to midnight. And, and they, you know, but people stay up to midnight all the time in their daily lives, right? You go out on Friday and Saturday night, people stay up to midnight, two o'clock in the morning, and uh, so on. So, you know, staying up to midnight is not a really that big of a deal. But anyway, so. Uh, we're going to have the normal program up until uh, you know, six o'clock uh, tea time. And then we might have an extended sort of break after the tea time until eight o'clock, where you could take a little more rest. And then uh, at eight o'clock, we'll have a, a puja. And uh, actually, we're going to do that a little bit. Uh, and we'll have uh, puja, and, uh, and then we're going to have a series of some different things. And we'll have a meditation period, and then uh, where I play that uh, song of uh, meditation that I passed out. It's just five minutes or so, and just uh, listening to that, and then going to meditation after after that, and then there will be a sitting and walking. And then later on, I'm going to be, now you, you've heard this, uh, this uh, chanting that's been going on, like just, just before now, this chanting Pali. So how many of you, how many of you understood the Pali chanting? Probably not many. So, uh, 
this evening and we're going to play that whole uh, Pali Puja. Uh, just, but I'm going to be giving the English translation of it because it's very beautiful, the meaning of those words and the, the puja, the, the meaning is very deep and uh, very nice to, you know, uh, sort of for cultivating that kind of faith and inspiration or just to, to understand the meanings of that and then meditating on again after that. And then at some point we might do some more yoga exercises, a uh, few, uh, you know, just to boost the energy a little bit. And then uh, we're going to uh, we can continue Met more, maybe have a, even another. At some point, there'll be a maybe another tea break around uh, ten o'clock or something like that, to, if you need. And then, uh, anyway, we'll just continue uh, that up to. And then, just before midnight, there's another special chanting. It's very powerful to kind of uh, boost the mind uh, up. Uh, hopefully, you know. To, to you know, at to, uh, midnight, uh, and, you know, a few minutes after the uh, midnight, and then of course you can continue meditating more over that time. Uh, you know, take your take your rest. Does anybody have any questions about that? Yes. Did you mention Q and A? Yeah. There will be a Q and A or no? no Q &A. Uh, yeah, there probably would be. I, I guess I, I forgot to mention that. But. That depends on you. You can stay up the whole night if you want, but <laughs> at least we try to encourage people to you know, make it to uh, one minute past 12 before they rush to the bed. <laughs> and you're not forcing people to do that, but just encourage people to, uh, you know, uh, to try to push the, the envelope a little bit. You know. And morning schedule is as usual? Uh, morning schedule, no. Uh, it would be that optional if uh, you want to get up and come and meditate at uh, five thirty. You can. Otherwise, if you you, know, you want to sleep a little longer, you can just get up and come for breakfast. And tomorrow there's, there'll probably be a special Sri Lankan New Year food for breakfast called a kitty butt or milk rice. That's a traditional. Uh, Asian kind of a New Year uh, food and milk rice, and maybe some other things. I'm not sure. And person who are on the Zoom, they will be also will be broadcasting this entire country with that. I would say from about yeah, that that puja time when I do that puja, I would say yeah, they would maybe eight o'clock. Yeah, we'll just keep it, way, keep, keep it running. Yeah. Or, or even the some from seven o'clock the Q and A if people want to. Oh, so Q and A is at seven o'clock. Oh no no excuse me you're right it's, yeah, at eight o'clock we'll do that. Yeah. So at eight o'clock we'll have the regular uh, little short puja Q and A then we'll meditate and then after that somewhere around nine nine thirty we'll do that uh, listen to that longer puja and uh, maybe do some walking meditation in between. Some yoga stretches and then, something like that. So no yoga tomorrow. Hmm? Tomorrow morning, no yoga. Do it on your own. You got to learn how to do things on your own, not waiting for me to come and lead you through everything. You know, because once you leave here, you're on your own. You have to practice dhamma on your own. You have to have the discipline to get up and. Uh, do the practice. Uh, okay, so <clears throat> does anybody have any last questions about the meditation uh, practice? I think several times I've gone over, you know, sort of the, the you know a good way to grad, you know gradually get into the meditation. Uh, 
But I wanted to mention just uh, one or two other kind of little uh, images or perceptions that you can kind of, uh, you know, reflect on when you have, you know, reached a point where, you know, the mind becomes more centered, not too many hindrances, and you have a good feeling of, you know, things coming and going. And just try to imagine and feel that really this body and nervous system is like a spider web. You know, because every cell of the body, all of our organs and every cell of the body basically is connected to the, you know, to the nervous system. And it's basically, you know, it looks almost like a spider web. If you've ever seen a, a you know, diagram of the physiology. Of, uh, how many people have seen that, uh, what do you call that, that plasticization of the human body? Uh, you know, it shows the human body, they've actually took corpses and there's a process involved of putting it into kind of a wax or something or some kind of a liquid and it preserves the body perfectly. And, uh, you know, they, they've cut it up and they've stripped off the skin and, you know, it's really amazing what, you know, and you can see exactly, you know, a, a human body, but in, like perfectly mint condition, except it's dead. All the organs and everything intact. They even stripped off the skin, it's like peeling off the whole skin of the body, but everything is intact inside. And so uh, anyway, there's been exhibitions of that. Uh, I've gone there before, it's very, very impressive. But anyway, so, but it shows the, the nervous system, parts of it where, you know, the super fine little, you know, threads of nerves and so on going all out. Uh, but anyway, so to, just to get that feeling of a, a spider web. And our mind is like the little spider, you know, sitting out at the edge of the web. And any time the nervous system is ping, pinged, you know, sound, sight, smell, taste, something on the skin from inside, or even a thought coming, it's like the vibration of the web. It's like an insect flying into the web. And the web vibrates. And then it w sort of wakes up the spider that was maybe sleeping at the edge. It wakes it up. And then it can to look to see what it was. And it was something that it can't eat or something that, too dangerous for it. You know, it, it leaves it alone. But otherwise it goes in and gobbles it up. Uh, and that's normally what our mind does. Gobbling it up means it goes to react. Oh, that's pain. Oh, that itch. That sound, what's that? So that's like the, you know, the web vibrating. And so in the meditation, when you reach that kind of, uh, you know, level of awareness, just to, to you know, bring up that feeling of just that spider web, you know, connected to all the different senses and just listen to for the subtle vibrations of the, you know, the web. And then from that, then is the idea of the empty house with nobody home. And, you know, the house has a surveillance camera, you know, there's closed circuit TVs. You can see what's going on, but it can't really do anything. Of course, the more modern ones now, they're connected to police stations, <laughs> you know, it can ring off bells and so on, but, uh, <clears throat> but there's a seeing eye camera in the house, and that is awareness. That is, uh, you know, present moment body-centered awareness. It's basically can know and feel anything that moves anywhere within the body. It's like a blip on a radar screen or a thought going through the mind. Uh, and just to kind of, kind of bring that up, it can be a really nice uh, 
a nice feeling and, and give a, a good uh, insight. And if you ever, if you happen to get to that point, then the last the last thing to go basically is the sense of self. I mean, you can endure and observe pains, you know, coming and going. You can observe thoughts coming and going, sounds coming and going, and kind of uh, you know, learn how to kind of ignore them, or at least with the with the concentration. Uh, they're not you know, bothering you anymore. And kind of everything could kind of disappear because when the mind is not reacting to things, things kind of like disappear because the perceptions are not functioning anymore. The mind is no longer throwing out perceptions for every uh, little thing that's coming and going. You know, and it's just basically hearing, hearing, seeing, seeing, smelling, smelling, tasting, tasting, touching. Uh, but the meaning of that, when you say hearing, hearing, it means there's nobody hearing and there's nothing heard. There's just hearing. That means there's just that pure awareness of hearing the vibration or seeing, smelling, tasting, touching, and even thinking. And that would be equal to that state of equanimity that I mentioned last night as being the seventh factor of enlightenment up to that uh, stage. Now, there's an interesting, and that's really the essence of meditation. That is really the penultimate level of meditation before enlightenment would happen, or the mind opening up. And there's a very f uh, famous and popular uh, sutta the Buddha gave the brief meditation instructions. So there was this guy, an ascetic, you know, who had been practicing meditation for a long time, but still, you know, uh, you know, couldn't get it, you know, and he, he'd been hearing uh, meditation instructions from different teachers, and even the Buddha, you know, talking about the, the four foundations of mindfulness, and, and this guy was still a little bit confused. So the Buddha was out going on his alms round one day, and this uh, ascetic uh, came up and he said, oh, Master Gautama, Master Gautama, please teach me a meditation. Teach me a short meditation. And the Buddha said, well, now is not the right time to ask a question. I'm on my alms round, you know, come back a little later. He said, no, no, please, please, just very short, very short. And usually the Buddha would listen to somebody's request up to the third time and then kind of give in and grant the request. So the guy for the third time said, no, no, please, please, I, you know, I don't, know how long, I don't know how long I'm going to live. Please teach me a short meditation. So then the Buddha said, okay, Bahia, for you in the heard, there's just hearing. In the seen, there's just seeing. In the smelling, tasting, touching, feeling, thinking, there's just those bare vibrational phenomena. In other words, there's no person that's hearing, seeing, tasting, smelling, touching, or thinking, and there's no objects that are, you know, being uh, identified or clung to. And the guy got it. He said, oh, great. And he, he went off. Or he, he might attain enlightenment at that moment. And so he went off. The Buddha continued his arms round. And then a couple hours later, some monks came by and he said, Master, what, what did he do? What did he do? What did he tell that guy, you know? He got killed by a bull. And the Buddha said, don't worry about Bahia, he was a wise person. He didn't trouble me, he got it, and he attained enlightenment. You don't worry about him. So what had happened, this guy had gone off and was applying the Buddhist teaching, and you know, he was 
seeing to anybody was just seeing, seeing, hearing, hearing, smelling, smelling, tasting, tasting, thinking, thinking, without any thoughts of I am doing this or, or focusing on any particular objects. And then he was going across a, a road and a wild, I mean, a bull, a cow with, you know, long horns came running down the street and gored this <laughs> person, you know, stuck the horn into the, to his side. And as the horn was going in, the only thing in that person's mind was feeling, feeling. Nobody feeling anything, no fear, worry, nothing else. And he attained enlightenment and dropped it in the street. And then some monks who have seen that, what happened, and that's why they came to the Buddha. What did you tell this guy? <laughs> and they thought he had told him something uh, strange. But So that is, that is really the, the penultimate meditation uh, uh, state of awareness. And there's another story. The monk was, had been practicing the meditation on the earth element and using bones as a kind of a meditation object. So, you know, he was training himself to see with x-ray vision. For, so anybody he looked at, it, you wouldn't see flesh and, you know, the, whatever their body was. You'd only see the skeleton inside, their bones. So he was training himself for that. And then he was walking down a mountain to go to the village for his arms round again. Uh, and then a man came running out of the village. No, uh, a lady came running out of the village. He just washed the hair and the hair was, you know, wet and, and so on. And she was running out of the, uh, the village. And, you know, she had known that monk before because you know, she came for arms. And so the monk was just, you know, walking slowly and mindfully with his uh, eyes in six feet on the ground in front. And so he heard this noise, you know, coming toward. And so as, as, the, as the lady got close, you know, he kind of looked up and the lady smiled at him. And he saw the, the white of the teeth and then he just had this perception of just bones. He didn't even recognize who it was or anything else. And he developed his, he attained enlightenment then, there and then. And then the lady ran off and the monk continued walking. And then a few minutes later, the husband of that lady came running out, you know, to chase her. He saw the Buddha and then he stood, not the Buddha, excuse me, this monk, Tisa, and uh, uh, stopped him and said, Venerable well, Sir, did, did you see my wife go by? And the monk kind of looked up and he said, Man, woman, or beast, I don't know, some bones went by. <laughs> and he kept walking. So, that is the that is the kind of you know meditation psychology of you know the very advanced level of uh, you know mindfulness and wisdom and, and awareness. But we can train ourselves. That's why in the vipassana system, you know, especially that Mahasi method of vipassana, it has you note each mind moment is just if you hear something, it's just hearing here. Nobody hearing it and nothing heard, it's just a vibration, a raw, a raw vibration of sound vibration or a visible vibration. Your mind is not creating that vibration into a man or a woman or a dog or anything else that then might trigger off desires or fears and things like that. So it's a specific type of training. Anyway, 
So if you happen to get to that point in your meditation when you're coming to that state of awareness, you can bring up this kind of understanding. This is part of the Chintamaya Panya. And it can lead to the actual Bhavana Maya Panya, which would be enough to kind of break that uh, conditioned mind and actually experience it. Anyway, I just, just wanted to mention that. Okay. Anybody have any uh, final questions about this? Yeah, about the uh, uh, next time you should ask the Cajun. Just one, one question is that you're this. So the monk, he, he was just focusing on the bone aspect of the, the rupa and um, so because he was just focusing on his perception that's all he saw but in this rupa there is no self so basically it's a backhanded way of not focusing on the self could you say that yes he was just uh, seeing the emptiness you know there was only bones and so looking at bones is is not going to incite lust or desire or anything else. But, um, okay, so every individual is just a sum of five aggregates, nothing more than that. And what about the Buddha? The Buddha, I heard that we call him a sata. He's the only one that we call, I mean, or the arahants we call sata. What is meant by that? What is, what is he? Sata? Sata, S-A-T-T-A. Sata is a being. Yeah. Why, why is it referred to as a being? Um, and the other people on the night of the Asata? Uh, I don't know. I'm not that much of a poly expert. <laughs> Be able to nit nitpick all these details, fine details of poly nuances and so on. I heard that. Yeah, there's a lot of different interpretations, you know, to keep it simple, you know, okay. keep it simple. But is the Buddha also, can we also view him as just, um, just a sum of aggregates? Is there something different about The him? difference is, in his mind, there's no greed, hatred, and delusion. Mm -hmm. There's no sense of I and self and no clinging and so on, even though he could. I mean, he, his mind is in the, the middle. The mind is enjoying both worlds, the relative world and the, and the, the super mundane world at the same time. It's like you're sitting in a window. Let's say you're sitting in a window sill and the window is open. You know, effortlessly you could, you know, turn your eyes to the right and see inside the room. And effortlessly, you could turn your eyes to the left and see the outside world and understand them both simultaneously. So that's the kind of power that the Buddha had. And when he needed to act in a relative way, like to talk to somebody, he's not going to say, you empty five aggregate being, he'll call him Job, Sariputta, you know, he'll use relative conventional language. But when he doesn't need to do that, his mind automatically just comes back and rests in that unconditioned, empty state. That's the power that the, the Buddha had to do that effortlessly. So he lived in both worlds, a relative world, that's why he could give Dhamma talks, he could act, talk to people in kind of ordinary ways, and you know, a woman lost her baby and he would console her and you know, tell her, give her some Dhamma that she would then get <laughs> awakened to. And, and so on. Okay, uh, I think uh, we'll go ahead and uh, begin our morning meditation period then. And uh, I know that now some people may want to, you know, sit for a longer time because, you know, if you have a good state of concentration, it's good, you know, to to stay in that for even longer and longer uh, because deeper and deeper kind of insights can uh, arise uh, as you sit longer. 
And as you sit longer, basically you're enduring more pain and more restlessness, and you're learning how to relax around it, and all that helps to weaken the sense of the I, to weaken the sense of the self. Uh, and so the longer you sit and, and uh, you know, sit still and not giving in to all the urges and desires to move and, or think about things, the mind enters again uh, increasingly deeper states of the tranquility, even to the state of the jhana. And uh, that's when uh, the consciousness can undergo paradigm shifts, you know, where the sense of self starts to dissolve and the whole world almost feels like it's being turned inside out. Uh, and that can be scary for people, but if you stay with it and not to be scared about it, uh, it comes out into a very beautiful uh, experience of no self. So these things that happen, but a lot of people get panicked and worried when uh, their, their mind starts like being pulled apart, like taffy, pulling taffy apart, you know. And, uh, I'm not saying that to, to, to scare you or anything, but you know, if those things happen, not to have a fear or worry about it. Okay? So, uh, so therefore, uh, if you want to do, when you're going to do walking, like sit for as long, we're not going to ring a bell for specific periods. Just try to sit for as long as you can, but at some point uh, you can stand up. And then, because uh, there's not that many of us here really, uh, you can do walking over on the side or go into the hallways or even outside. It's quite nice, uh, even outside. Uh, actually meditating outside uh, can give a, a different kind of experience because of the, the outside vibrations are, are different. Uh, you know, to do some slow, uh, some walking and standing uh, awareness, you know, outside or even walking back, you know, right in, in there. Or, or in inside, off, off on the side. Uh, in, in, if somebody is still, you know, sitting there and uh, you'll just continue that on your own that means sitting uh, standing or walking and sitting again up until the, uh, the lunch time so that's just even it's not even two hours so okay Take a drink of water now so you don't have to be taking a drink of water during a meditation and uh, making noise and unscrewing the cap and stuff. And then just gonna sit in a straight posture, keep the chin lifted up, level to the floor, keep the shoulders back a little. Actually, there's a way to try to find the center of gravity. There's a center of gravity of the head and spine over the, the hips and the base of the spine and just move the whole head and spine backwards until you feel like you're coming to that tipping point where you might kind of tip backwards and just stop short of tipping backwards and try to hold that straight posture 
Try to relax your face, relax the shoulders. But it might feel a little bit strange because you never sat straight before. Let's see if you can maintain that uh, straight posture. Feel that natural inward curve of the lower spine. Then begin some three-part breathing. Feel that rib cage expanding, floating, that upward expansion of the lungs and chest. Hold the air in several seconds. And slowly breathe out. Try to follow that out breath, the contracting sensations of the out breath all the way down to the end. Feel the last bit of air go out. And then just pause at that point without the breath. Don't consciously breathe in. Just feel that pause. Let the breath come in by itself when it's ready. And just stay with the breathing, feel that next in breath. Don't strain at the breathing, just requires a little bit of effort to get air up to the top. Breathing in, letting go of the past and future. Breathing out, sitting here and now. Breathing in, feeling the whole body. Breathing out, feeling the whole body. Breathing in, sitting. Breathing out, sitting. So you hold that outline of the body and the mind's eye. The mind's in video camera. It's like looking into a mirror, Just watching this breathing body, especially tuned in to the expanding and contracting sensation. The four phases of each breath cycle.
that you observe how in one in-breath there's many short expand, expanding moments. On the contracting out breath, there's many short contracting movements. Be aware of the stream of thoughts going through the back of the mind. Keeping that breathing body in the front screen. And while tuned into the breathing, Feel the clothing touching the skin in the background, the little prickly itching sensation. Body movement. Pauses between the breasts, keep checking the chin, the posture, bring it back to straight alignment. Try lifting the chin a little bit higher notice any change in consciousness. Consciousness should brighten. Raise the chin up a little higher. You have good concentration, opening up to the flow of impermanence. Notice the other sensations coming and going in different parts of the body. The sound vibrations arising and vanishing.
in in sitting out out sitting You can reflect or investigate the body as just being billions of cells, atoms, electrons, interacting, vibrating, basically just condensed energy. Body is just energy vibration. That you perceive as being different things, that's perception. Be aware of the aggregates as they appear. Material vibration, pleasant or painful feeling, names or labels, perception. urges, thoughts. And the ego consciousness Flo floating around in mental space. Keep remembering, it's just feeling, feeling, hearing, hearing, thinking, thinking.
continually rising, vanishing. Bring up that image of the body being a spider web, the nervous system, a consciousness like the little spider. Just feeling like an empty house with nobody home.
from time to time, take a few three-part breaths to re-energize if necessary. The mind is getting a little drowsy, too many thoughts.
We've been elevated to a new seat now. Bundang Saranangachami Dhammang Saranangachami Sangang Saranangachami Duty Ampi Buddhang Saranga Chami Duty Ampi Dhammang Saranga Chami Duty Ampi Sangang Saranga Chami Duty Ampi Buddhang Saranga Chami Tati Ampi Dhammang Saranangga Chami Tati Ampi Sangang Saranangga Chami Panati Pata Veramani Sikha Padang Samariyami Adina dana veramani sikha padang samadhyami Kame sumichachara veramani sikha padang samadhyami Musavada veramani sikha padang samadhyami Sura Mirya Majapamadatana Veramani Sikha Padang Samadhyami So, okay, now we'll, we'll recite the Itipiso Swakato Bhagavato, then the Buddha Puja, and then we're going to recite the Mahajaya Mangala Gato. Blessings for you both. <coughs> Namo Tassa Bhagavato Arahato Samma Sambuddhasa Namo Tassa Bhagavato Arahato Samma Sambuddhasa Namo Tassa Bhagavato Arahato Samma Sambuddhasa Iti piso bhagava arahang samma sambuddho Vidya charana sampanno sugato loka vidu Anuttaro purisadamma sarati Satta deva manusanam Buddho bhagavati savakato bhagavata dhammo sanditiko akaliko ehipasiko upanayiko pachattam veditabhu vinyuhiti supatipanno bhagavato savaka sango Ujupati Panno Bhagavato Savaka Sango Nyaya Pati Panno Bhagavato Savaka Sango Sami Chipati Panno Bhagavato Savaka Sango Yadidam Chattari Purisa Yugani Atta Purisa Pungala Isa Bhagavato Savaka Sango Ahuneyo, Pahuneyo, Dakineyo, Anjali Karaniyo, Anuttaram, Punyakittam Lokasati. 
meditation with all beings reciting these verses Yathavata ca ammehi sampadam punya sampadam sabbe deva anumodantu sabbe bhuta anumodantu sabbe satta anumodantu sabbe sampati siddhya what is it? Forty. We're going to recite the Mahajaya Mangala Gata to bestow blessings on Indika on his 48th birthday and his, <laughs> his dear wife and life companion. <laughs> Well, they know what that means. Well, we're chanting it for them anyway. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Mahakaruniko nato itaya sabapaninam puretua parami samba pato sambodi muttamam itena satchavanyena Otu te jaya mangalam jayanto bodhiya mule sakya nam nandi vadano evam tveham jayo hotu jayasu jaya mangalam sakkatva buddharatanam osadam uttamam varam hitam devam anusanam Bhundate jena sottina na santu padava sambe dukkha vupa samintu te sakkatva dhamma ratanam osadam uttamam varam parila upa samanam dhamma te jena sottina na santu padava sambe bhaya vupa samintu te sakkatva sangaratanam 
ಪೂಷದಮುತ್ತಮ ವರಮ್ಮಾಹುನೇಯ ಆಹುನೇಯ ಸಂಗತಿ ಜೇನ ಸುತ್ತಿ ನಪದವಸಮೆ ರೋಗಾವೂಪಸಮಿಂತು ತೆ ಯಾಂ ಕಿಂಚಿರತನ ಲೋಕೆ ವಿಜತಿ ವಿವಿಧ ಪುಟು ರತನ ಬುಂದ ಸಮಿ ತಸ್ಮತಿ ಭವಂತು ತೆ ಯಾಂ ಕಿಂಚಿರತನ ಲೋಕೆ ವಿಜತಿ ವಿವಿಧ ಪುಟು ರತನ ಸಮಿ ತಸ್ಮತಿ ಭವಂತು ತೆ ಯಾಂ ಕಿಂಚಿರತನ ಲೋಕೆ ವಿಜತಿ ವಿವಿಧ ಪುಟು ರತನ ಸಂಗ ಸಮಿ ತಸ್ಮತಿ ಭವಂತು ತೆ ನಾಟಿ ಮೇ ಶರಣ ಮಾನ್ಯಂಬುಂದೋ ಮೇ ಶರಣ ವರಂ ಏನ ಸಚ್ಚವಜೀನ ಹೋತು ತೆ ಜಯ ಮಂಗಲ ನಾಟಿ ಮೇ ಶರಣ ಮಾನ್ಯಂ ದಮ್ಮೋ ಮೇ ಶರಣ ವರಂ ಏನ ಸಚ್ಚವಜೀನ ಹೋತು ತೆ ಜಯ ಮಂಗಲ ನಾಟಿ ಮೇ ಶರಣ ಮಾನ್ಯಂ ಸಾಂಗೋ ಮೇ ಶರಣ ವರಂ ಇತ್ತೇನ ಸಚ್ಚವಜೇನ ಓಟು ತೆ ಜಯ ಮಂಗಲ ಸಾಬಿತ್ತಿಯೋ ವಿವಜಂತು ಸಾಬರೋಗೋ ವಿನಸ್ತು ಮಾತೆ ಭವತ್ವಂತರಾಯೋ ಸುಖೀತಿ ಗಾಯುಕೋ ಭಾವೆ ಭವತು ಸಬ ಮಂಗಲ ರಕಂತು ಸಬ ದೇವತ ಸಬ ಬುದ್ಧಾನುಭಾವೇನ ಸದಾ ಸುತ್ತಿ ಭವಂತು ತೆ ಭವತು ಸಬ ಮಂಗಲ ರಕಂತು ಸಬ ದೇವತ ಸಬ ದಮ್ಮಾನುಭಾವೇನ ಸದಾ ಸುತ್ತಿ ಭವಂತು ತೆ ಭವತು ಸಬ ಮಂಗಲ ಕಂತು ಸಬ ದೇವತ ಸಬ ಸಂಗಾನುಭಾವೇನ ಸದಾ ಸುತ್ತಿ ಭವಂತು ತೆ ನಾಕಾತಯಕಬುಟ್ಟಾನ ಪಾಪಗಾನಿವಾರಣ ಪರಿತಸ್ಸನುಭಾವೇನ ಅಂತು ತೆ ಸಮುಪಂಡವೇ ದೇವೋ ವಾಸತು ಕಾಲೇನ ಸಸ ಸಂಪತ್ತಿ ಹೋಚು ಚ ಪೀತೋ ಬವತು ಲೋಕೋ ಚ ರಾಜ ಬವತು ಡಮ್ಮಿಕೋ ಸಾಂಬೆ ಬುಂದ ಬಲ ಪತ್ತ ಪಚ್ಚೆ ಕಾನಂಚ ಯಂ ಬಲಂ ಅರಹಂತ ನಂಚ ತೇಜೇನ ಲಕ್ಕಂ ವಂದಿ So, in Yuga Mahatya, we've been a great uh, Maha Upasaka for us all these years, supporting the Sangha, the different monasteries in so many different uh, ways. And uh, we wish you to have many more years of health and happiness and the ability to accumulate more and more merits and to help you spread the dhamma in your unique way and you raise your family and your kids to be good uh, buddhists and uh, to uh, help you know, spread the teachings of the dhamma in this country which really needs the dhamma against all the greed hatred and delusion that's going on in the world so uh, i'm going to i have this spirit mood I'm going to read a bit. tire for you Oops. sabhi buddha bala patta pache kana ke yam bala arahana tate ji na rakam vandan sabase May the Buddha Dhamma Sangha bless you, protect you. It's a key hold. Mrs. Sinaku, uh, 
Знаете, Тайвис? Может быть, это 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 Тайвис? Может быть